Hello, welcome to Wilcox Nursery and Landscape. I'm Bruce Turley, the owner, and this is where we are focused on native plants and sustainable products and practices. We're going to be talking about native plants and identifying and getting you familiar with some of our native plants. So we're going to do a segment where we do some points of interest around the nursery and talk about some of the plant displays that you can see uh, plants grown out. So the uh, question always arises is what is a native plant? A native plant would be a plant that occurred here naturally prior to European uh, contact here in the New World. And why do we plant native plants? Uh, native plants have adapted the diversity of environments we have in Florida, and in so they are able to help us reduce our input from fertilizers, pesticides, and they're really fantastic for providing sustainability from our pollinators at the whole chain of life. And they, of course, give us a sense that we know where we are as opposed to anywhere else on the globe. In this area, we have two species of our native coffees. Uh, both of these species are native to the Tampa Bay area. This particular one is called soft leaf coffee. And if you hold it up to the light, it's got a nice sort of metallic iridescence to the foliage. It's kind of unique about this species. This one still is in bloom. You can see the little cream colored blooms. Coffees are just tremendous attractors for uh, pollinators, especially the bees, and uh, also for our state butterfly, the zebra heliconia. Uh, coffees produce berries in the fall into the winter. The berries provide a really nice ornament to the plant as well as being a great source of food for songbirds. So again, this one is soft leaf coffee. Uh, as we go through this planting, you'll see a lot of tropical sage is blooming and growing mixed in here with some of the kuntis. Uh, again, tropical sage in our area tends to bloom just about year round. And again, it's a great pollinator plant. It's great for attracting butterflies, hummingbirds, and it's just a great kind of a year-round color plant to have in the landscape. Very easy growing, tolerates some filtered light as well as strong sun. Probably does better where there is a little bit of filtering to the sunlight. Uh, so the next coffee that's in this display is the shiny leaf coffee. Variously, they both are sometimes referred to as wild coffee. I never really liked that common name because I don't think it's uh, really that definitive of which species that you might be talking about. So in this one, the foliage is glossier and darker. It's a little bit richer looking than the soft leaf coffee. Uh, this one isn't currently producing blooms, kind of buried down in here are some of the red berries uh, that you might be able to see that. Uh, typically on a, most plants are gonna be really displayed in a very showy manner. So this again is shiny coffee. Again, there's different population types of that all the way from miniatures that occur in the northern range of its distribution uh, to some of the smaller forms that occur in central Florida to rather large growing forms that occur in south Florida. But again, this is a plant that if you have uh, shaded areas, it's a plant that you can't beat. It absolutely thrives in shade as opposed to tolerating it and uh, it's really a plant that's a must for any shade garden. On this side of our planting is one of uh, two popular native cassias. Cassias are very popular because they're both a nectar plant for butterflies, but they're also a larval plant or host plant for several species of sulfur butterfly. Uh, they typically bloom in the fall and in the spring. Uh, right now, this plant, it's early September, and this plant is starting to bud and getting ready to bloom, starting with the fall bloom. And uh, again, it's a nice, lacy textured plant. So this one is Privet Cassia. Uh, the other Cassia that uh, is so popular is Bahama Cassia. The Bahama Cassia is a South Florida species, uh, very popular, but this Privet Cassia is the one that's more widely distributed into Central Florida as well as South Florida. Uh, as you can see, this one is growing somewhere around head height. It's typically about a six to seven foot plant, both in spread and in height. And uh, it's just a wonderful lacy texture. I love combining it with native firebush because the combination of the yellow and the orange colored blooms is so nice. And then the wonderful wildlife attraction that they both provide. Uh, 
up above this uh, is a tree called black ironwood. Black ironwood is a uh, very strong wooded tree. It's known from its range in South Florida and up the East Coast. Uh, it is a really nice little tree for the landscape. It typically gets in the 30 foot range. Again, very strong wood. Uh, the flower is not particularly noticeable, but it produces a black fruit that's very attractive to songbirds. Just a super nice little tree that really is well suited to so many of our small suburban and urban landscapes. So that's our tour of our little vignettes here at the nursery. And if you really want a dynamic 365, 24-7, plant native plants in your landscape, like our firebush here and our goldenrods, and you will bring all kinds of life to your landscape.